Heavens. I mean, again, heavens I can believe above. heavens above. I can <laughs> believe it. Oh, oh heavens. <laughs> oh, oh, <dear. laughs> Welcome to the Sheer Likes Team podcast with me, Charlotte Collins. This week, I'm joined by Polly Sayer, Tor West, and Sherry Andrew. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Just before we started, we were talking about... We were talking about <laughs> politicians who were dishy. Dishy Rishy. A.K.A. none. A- A.K.A. none. <laughs> the, the list was slim. We should stay. We're recording this on Tuesday. We have a new Prime Minister now. By the time this goes out, who knows? We might have yeah. one. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but hasn't it just been so crazy? We thought we should say that politics aside, and I will justify this point again in a minute, but politics aside, how awesome that we finally have a person of colour in office, in the top job. Yeah, I guess that's one thing to take out of it. <laughs> this is the way I see it, and I know, and some people, and I put this on Instagram, and some people said to me, "But you can't extract them from their policies." And you know, obviously, a lot of people hate Rishi, the current Conservative Party. That's totally fine. Yeah. If, if you're a four-year-old Indian boy or a four-year-old black boy, and to, you know, to be able to see somebody who just isn't a white man or a stupid white woman standing up there, surely yeah. that's a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. I so I so agree. We've got women, women winning the World Cup. We've got you know, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's I, it's, it's it's a start, right? It's, it's, a start. it's better, yeah. Surely it's better than just like another shit white conservative. Mm. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Let's ask see. Us, ask us know, could week. be the worst. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Dishy Rishi, Robot Rishi, the, the votes are out. <laughs> the out. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure he's like the man I'm dreaming about, the man I'm going to like, you know, want to be with. He's not like, he's not. But I also poster. wouldn't say no. Oh, are we mm. talking sexually now yeah. or mm. in leadership terms? Um. <laughs> sexually. Sorry. I wouldn't say no to him being my prime minister. <laughs> 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 Top chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm talking about, yeah, sex. Yes, uh, yeah, okay. In a sex format, uh, yes. he is, uh, I guess he's like sort of fit in a like, as we said before, like, it's like when you're a group of girls. I remember, so I did cheerleading at uni and there was one guy that did cheerleading and we all thought he was fit and I was like, is he actually fit mm. though? I think it's probably just because he's the only straight male in the cheerleading squad and he can do cheerleading and we all quite like that. Mm. So I wonder if it's been like it's that, struggles. like he's the only like wow, vaguely that, fit politician. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So and that, cheerleader effect IRL comes yeah, to mind. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So Tor and I of, of the four of us were, were the two at all girls schools and we were saying that any man who walked through the door, <laughs> they, could, they could literally be you know, like, not, not good. Really not good. <laughs> like, 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 really like quite poor. really <laughs> bad. And everyone will be like, oi, oi. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this? I mean, it was probably a combination of, A, they were the only man. And B, I reckon our hormones were like, yeah, going, yeah, yeah we were just really, really yeah. yeah. Did you have true. mostly female teachers then at a girls' school? Um, yeah, I think probably, we were probably about 80% female. Yeah, yeah I'd say like majority women. Yeah. 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 I suppose it's, yeah, like my husband went to an all boys school and I think he said the same thing. Like, you meet like one girl and you'd be like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not very good for socialising with the opposite sex. No, no, it's no, not. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Anyway, I miss school. Mm. How about you guys? I really not miss me. school. Really? I don't miss it. No, I, I, really enjoy, I really enjoy, I loved it when I was there, but I don't ever think about, oh, I wish I could do that again. No. I'm like, no, that was done. Yeah. On to, yeah, on to I, adulthood now. I think about school like every week. Yeah. Do you? Do you? Mm. I loved school mm. so Me too. Much. Me too. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't mind it, but I feel like I'm so, like I'm so glad that I don't have to like hand in homework anymore. <laughs> And like do mm. exams and just like, yeah. revise for stuff. I feel like I feel like me and yeah. Sherry have to hand on homework like, every day. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Copy deadlines. Copy deadlines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do feel every single year when exam results come out, I get this wave of like, thank God, God I never me. had to do this, not me. And actually, when I went to get my COVID booster jab, like when when was that? This time last year? It was like last December. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I had to go, my local one was a school hall and it was the most exam vibes ever because do you remember you know when you go and get your COVID job they're like set on these separate tables and mm. you kind of go up in lines it was I can't tell you the exam vibes and it gives me anxiety I'm so happy that I don't have to do yeah. that anymore yeah mm. so much like it's just yeah. a real treat yeah. like there are lots of things that are good about being an adult and not doing yeah. exams as well. I'd rather Very go through true. any stressful ad, like work related situation over an exam yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah and also at the time it's all relative so yeah you know moving house is stressful but when you're a kid doing an exam is equally like as... I know, but I think I'd still mm. rather move house than do an exam would you? yeah, oh, yeah I, I think, think I'd rather do an exam at least you get something nice at the end Ooh, of it what really? you get yeah I was quite a geek quite liked all that learning <laughs> <laughs> I just have I <laughs> get some highlighters get some gel pens I could so <laughs> do like that smelly gel, gel pen yeah. <laughs> um, I at uni used to do scene exam papers did you guys have these? what? what, what does that mean? stupidest thing ever you would get the question basically in advance 
three, t- it was something like 72 hours in advance. So then you would go away. And so it was basically a so memory. T- I would go away, yeah, I'd write an essay. I'd learn the essay off by heart. I'd go in, I'd write it all down and then I'd leave. What a load of shit. What really? a stupid system. You know, and that's also really like skewed towards people who learn in a specific way. 100%. Yeah. And like if you've just got a good memory, then you're yeah. fine. It doesn't mean necessarily you can apply that. We've well, had to write knowledge. a decent essay. Yeah. yeah. But like, why not just have coursework? Yeah, weird. Very weird. Interesting. So, do you guys do dissertations? No. Yeah, I did that. What, yeah. what was mine on? Mm. Oh gosh, this is quite what dry did you now. I did English. Yeah. So mine was on Thomas Hardy and like the role of pubs in the Victorian era. Oh, and, like, that is drinking. Sherry, what a fit. What do you mean dry? Is it? That is the most like non dry literally literally yeah, not dry. Well, I mean hard <laughs> party is dry to be fair, but pubs is cool. Well, yeah. I know I love pubs that. is cool and like alcoholism and there's a lot of yeah, quite interesting. stuff you could say about that. So that was quite interesting. I studied a hardy book at niche though. Oh yeah. my god, and it was you so boring. That's dissertation, right? It's yeah. They make yeah. it. Yes. They make you do it something really niche. Don't really they? niche. Yeah. What's the Hardy mm. book? And it's kind of oh, it's God. kind of Wuthering Heights esque. It's all like on moors, and it's all really just depressing and bleak. Uh, Mayor of Cast. No. Oh, it's in five um, chapters. I just remember oh that. Oh my goodness! I literally wrote about this. My, I, who knows? Who <laughs> even remembers what they studied? It's almost like the Highwaymen, but not. I Is it Tess of the Durvilles? No. Mm. I feel I read that. Oh. Mayor of Cast approach. No. Oh God. The name will come to me, but I, I couldn't pluck it out of the air. But it will come to me when. Wow! I hope my dad's not listening because he's like number one Hardy, Hardy fan in the world. Yeah. Hardy, <laughs> Love that film. Uh, probably what was your decision on? Uh, it was on Beethoven's Eighth Symphony, obviously. <laughs> For real? Yeah. It's just music. She studied music. music. Oh, I, just, I, I, I wanted to do it on the ninth, but oh they said God. no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually? Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference between the eighth and the ninth? The well, ninth is way better, but like, there's it? obviously been like way more stuff People written about the ninth. So they were like, why don't you do the eighth? And I was like, it's a bit boring though. And they're like, yeah, but do the eighth. And I was like, so how many words you had to write? 20,000 words. 20,000 20, words. 20, 20, 20, 20, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was 10 which felt like long enough, my God. Um, and I probably just turned out a load of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that is fascinating that that's what a dissertation had to be. Yeah, right. And what did you do? Just wow. like analyse like what the strings yeah, were Yeah, and like right. what each bit means. And I oh, can't even remember, to be honest. I was probably drunk half the time. Right. Anyway, <laughs> what did you write about? No, I, didn't, I, didn't have to, I did English and French. Uh, I didn't have to do a dissertation. Well, which really? really? It, was, it was a module I could choose. Same. That was one you could choose or you could do like another a different oh, exam module. Me like too. One that was an exam, not like mm. a scene exam. I took that instead. Yeah. 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 I don't think I've ever been so nervous in my entire life as my French oral at uni. Oh my god, so much pressure. Oh, that really? is so much pressure. Yeah, what do you I still... have to say in your French oral? I imagine it's like really high level French, but well, obviously. Like... Yeah, <laughs> it was. I, I know I had to we think about a book. <laughs> or do they not pay I had to give like a book review. <laughs> and then they ask you questions about it and then you've got to answer in yes, whatever in French, language. In, yeah. in whatever language, yeah. Yeah. It was so scary. Yeah. You were wow. learning French. Well, yeah, I start a French uh, course in a few weeks' time, actually. How's it going? Ooh. Well, I haven't started yet, so I'd say not great yet. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's like literally beginner level because I never learned French at school. I did like Spanish and German, both of which are like, Spanish is sort of useful to me, but German, absolutely not. Um, but I like I feel like I go to France, you know, skiing and like went to Paris last week and I go to, going to south of France next year again for a holiday. And I just feel like every time I'm, I feel like a bit of a dick. Not speaking Love French, that. so mm-hmm. I'm like, right, I'm gonna sort my shit out, learn some basics, and they'll You'll probably speak it. to me in English back. But at least it's just nice, yeah, just really good. Yeah. Yeah. I recommend listening to like French radio or okay. turning it on mm. in the background. I yeah. used to. Ooh. I remember doing my thesis season. I would do five hours of revision, and my last hour would be watching Sex and City with French subtitles on. That's so <laughs> top good. revision yeah. tip. Yeah, <laughs> and every that, day. Yeah, every day. Yeah, especially <laughs> something that you can like relate to because totally. you pick up the words when you yeah. and you understand what's going the context. on. Context. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, really good. Shout yeah. out. No disrespect to Duolingo, but I just didn't find it particularly good when I was trying to do it earlier this year. Just like I don't know, it's like, I feel like you go around a lot in circles, and like I wasn't really learning the things I actually wanted to. It makes me think Same. of um, Colin Firth in Love Actually. Being oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. 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 Portuguese. If you want to cite too. that, I can like give you that whole scene. Oh, do the whole spe- Yeah, yeah. I can't. I'm trying to think <laughs> yeah. what he says, like about fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> do you still use it? So, what languages did you study? Spanish? And- I did Spanish, but I already spoke that anyway. Mm. And then at uni, I from scratch, I did um, Portuguese and Catalan. Oh, wow. That's wow. Cool. You studied Catalan. My brother's been doing Catalan. Catalan actually. is the easiest language. Really? It's, because it's, it's, a, it's basically a mix of Spanish, French, and Portuguese. Yeah. Um, so, it's so different. Yeah. Than Spanish. yeah. So different. It looks almost like Russian. Does yeah. it? Has yeah. it got its own. Script. Yeah, it's got lots of like, like different like no, no, but it's lots of the sounds are quite kind of yeah. like T's and X's. Okay, like doesn't have the like guttural, guttural, guttural yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when I was it's listening not like to like, it, like, yeah, like where like Spanish would have like os and ah at the end it's like 
harder yeah. ending. Okay, less Latin. Latin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Wow. You guys oh, no, but actually, but, like, no, but actually, it's actually very Latin. <laughs> oh, is it? It's yeah. It stems from all of those languages. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Wow. interesting. Yeah. Cherry, you don't do a language. You don't do a language. I actually did uh, four languages at school, which is so oh. ironic because I cannot speak a single word of anything. Like <laughs> my brain just doesn't work in that way. But I also just think so school, nice. a school version of a language like is so relevant. Yeah. Mm. It's so relevant. It's, you can never really get anyone to. A, yeah, exactly. I thought I was sick at German at school because I got an A star and then I got to A level and I was like, yeah, it's so <laughs> much harder when yeah, you get to A level. But even then, yeah. you're just like, you're busy like pronouncing words and like practicing grammar like into an yeah. echo chamber of other people yeah, who are yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, German's hard. It is hard. And also like, I'm really annoyed with myself but I did that for A level. Like, I have not been to Germany. Like, no offense to any Germans listening. I really like oh, the you language. Did, you did do German A level? I did German A level oh. rather than Spanish. I'm like, I should have done Spanish. Mm. It's so much more useful to me. But then everyone told me not to do French as well. Really? Yeah, Why? because like, obviously, if you're going to do a language, people say like, you should do Spanish, you should do Chinese. Mm, it's you more should global. Do, yeah, global mm. languages. But in exactly. terms of French like, is quite narrow. places that you go to, like to visit, like yeah. that to me is I mean, you're useful. thinking of holidays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 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 we need business languages. <laughs> um, can we talk about recommendations? Sherry, have you been watching anything? Reading anything? Yes, I have been watching Industry. Mm-hmm. Don't know if you guys have seen, but the second series came oh, out. I was obsessed with the first series. Oh, me too. Yeah, well. it's obsessed. so good. So it's about an investment bank in the city, in London, and it's about a group of young graduates. So the first series is the graduates going on to the grad scheme and kind of making their way in that very like cutthroat, pressurized world and then the second series is a few of them have actually got a full-time job and it's again them just their story continues but um there's so much jargon in there and I don't think you need to know anything about the word of like banking or like stocks because I know zero Mm. but they do it in a really clever way in that um the storyline of their lives is the interesting bit and kind of like the stocks and shares is kind of secondary to what's going on which is a lot of like sex drugs as you can imagine mm. um but yeah i love it yeah so i think you're addictable. really underselling the Addictive. like sordid side of it i was gonna say it's a it's, filthy yeah. show it isn't is it? yeah yeah pure filth yeah, <laughs> it is. yeah. it's like <laughs> <Interesting. laughs> yeah. um it's yeah it's it's really good and yeah it's fantastic okay. yeah. but like they're so young and they're basically <laughs> yeah. trying it's all about them trying to like yeah make their mark in in the world right. and get on with their career and kind of being temp like all the temptations yeah of that side of yeah. things um yeah okay is the second series as good or yeah i would say even maybe not better but it's on par with mm-hmm. the first yeah, yeah. so Can ben recommend. did a grad scheme at an investment bank like that's oh. how he started i know i mean he claims it wasn't like it is in the show i don't know <laughs> we were together so i'd hope it wasn't um but he bit he loved it so much and binged, binged season two in like oh. one day oh really yeah wow. i think i think it's quite authentic, generally. I think it's quite yeah, well. yeah, I can imagine. It yeah. seems very accurate. Yeah. Um, to what I imagine that world is like. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. know, but. I remember reading an interview when it when the first series came out and the main guy, the the one who gets with what's her name? Um Jas was it Jasmine? Jasmine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The what I can't remember his name. Yeah. Rob. Is that his name? Rob. Yeah. Um and he's actually like a really kind of like chilled, you like just the total kind of mm. opposite of what he is in the in the in the series. And he was saying it's all really accurate and they consulted with loads of yeah like yeah. CEOs and that kind They're of thing. Really so awesome. it's pretty accurate. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah which makes it, which makes it even more exciting. Even more like, Didn't, and it, yeah. there was one investment bank who had to take I think it was that they had to take loo seats out of the loose because there was so much coke being done mm. on the seats that they had to remove them. Heavens. I mean, again, heavens I can't heavens believe above. heavens above. I can't <laughs> no. believe it. Oh, oh heavens. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs. Drugs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, really, really recommend. Okay, it's very okay. juicy, juicy watch. Yeah. yeah, juicy. And it's on BBC Three. Uh, yes, but it's all on iPlayer. Okay, oh, so you okay, can binge okay. it. Yeah. Tour anything very to recommend? Good. Um, not to watch. Um, but I did so excited to see that the final, well, not the final, the next series of Grey's Anatomy is out on on Disney. Oh God, so, what season ooh. could this possibly be by now? Yeah, season eighteen. So many seasons. Matt mm-hmm. suggested to me, he's like, should we start Grey's Anatomy? I was like, I just don't think I can deal with that level of commitment right mm. now. It's like, like from. Like day one, series yeah. one. Have you watched any of it? No. Oh, it's it's never too late. Is it? It's never too late. Okay. <laughs> so no. you're a diehard fan, though, aren't you? I really, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, to me, it just appeals to everything. Like it's got all the like the medical sciencey side of things, yeah. but also just such amazing relationship stories. Okay. And like, oh, just so 
So I think I watched up to about, well, I don't know, maybe season seven. Did you have in my first year of uni? I had lunch and fever, so it was a really good binge. (laughs) Did you? Did you get to quite a momentous? Any momentous moments without ruining it? I've seen the plane crash. Okay, okay, that's yeah, yeah, long. That that that. is like that is still to this day like the pivotal episode. Well, the shooting. I still think the shooting episode. The shooting, Denny dying. Mm -hmm. Those are the really momentous ones that I really remember. But you stopped because I stopped because it is like fucking like emotional. Oh, yeah. oh my god I don't have that in me it's yeah, yeah. it's just exhausting okay mm. the same reason I don't watch This Is Us oh my god yeah, yeah I got to that point with This Is mm. Us as well I was just like I just can't handle this anymore okay. it's just like an emotional roller coaster. real life episode. is like stressful and exhausting enough yeah, yeah, enough. Enough. Uh, yeah I'm like, happy mm. that you love it is anyone left Meredith yeah Meredith I think she's like a billionaire um, that, you know? I reckon some others too okay uh, not many. No. Um, and that's it, all I'm watching. Okay. And I'm also reading a really, really, really good book. Um, it's the new Maggie O'Farrell book. Oh, yeah. Because um, I love her books so much. Yes, remind and me what else she's written. So the, her most recent one was Hamnet, which is about Shakespeare's... Yes, of course. I yes. love that. Um, so. t- wasn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. I love it. So this new one is not... It's not similar, but it's similar in the fact that it's kind of set in the Renaissance times. Yeah. Um, and it's the kind of book where... I have to like reread sentences because it's so beautifully written. Aww, it's almost so like silly. so poetic. Yeah, um, she's such a she's so great writer. Yeah, yeah. She's like, like next level. Mm. Yeah, she's nice. one of my faves. Okay. Um, but it's hardback, so I'm kind of carrying this around this massive yeah. book. Oh, um, I really resent hardbacks for that reason. But kind of makes it more special as well, in a way as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, so um, yeah. yeah, really enjoying that. Cool. Nice. Ooh. And sorry, what's it called? The Marriage Portrait. The Marriage Portrait. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice. Any any tips on what it's about? It's about believe it or not yeah. um, <laughs> marriage. Yeah. it's about a very young girl so two houses and one girl gets married off to this duke um and sorry tell me and um yeah I, what I, happens what happens okay. it's quite um quite dark okay Ooh. interesting there's some death and um, that's my list yeah it's really yeah. good yeah, Polly anything to recommend uh just finished house of the dragon which i really enjoyed i think i've maybe mentioned that before but i just think it's really good yeah. like and i i didn't actually watch game of thrones that much at all but oh, i'm really yeah. enjoying this series i think my husband sort of said it's like a slower pace than game of thrones was but still feels like you know the power dynamics mm. kind, of, kind of cool so if you don't watch that i'd really recommend that um yellow jackets have i spoken to you about that i don't know if you have somebody has spoken about it on the Ooh. podcast oh, i thought that was bloody brilliant i really want to watch it yeah so it's about a high school soccer team who i think it must be in the 80s or something they they are in a plane crash and they are stranded in the wilderness for i think 18 months it's fictional obviously <gasps> um, vibes. Yeah, yeah lord of flies kind of vibes but obviously it's a group of women um i won't spoil the rest of it but yeah it's it's really good but it's about them as adults writing flashbacks and what happened yes now. exactly yeah. it's a kind of between that sounds the, amazing wow, really good what channel is that on i think i watched it on amazon prime okay. i think it's on yeah. sky as well okay. oh maybe it's sky yeah, yeah, cool. yeah oh, i saw amazon well. wow. which i actually finished it a while ago but i've been like keep like refreshing to try and find out when the next series is going to oh, be. Oh, that's always a sign. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. a sign. Um, the same happened with them in the House of the Dragon. I think it's not going to be out until 2024. Yeah. I was like, it's actually rude to finish a series and then like yeah. not even start filming it. It's like succession. Yeah, it's so rude. Yeah. And they just like make you sit around and wait right. for it. I'll, I'll be over it. 2024, who knows yeah, what I'll be doing true. Well, like, when they put, drop a new se- series of Stranger Things, I'm like, I literally couldn't even begin to guess what happened in the last series. Yeah, yeah. I need like, a reminder. Who, who's yeah. that much of a fan that they remember? Like, yeah, I, remember. I know. You need, like, a flashback, don't you? Yeah, they do. But yeah, how about you? Um, well, I have a confession, actually. I'm reading something, well, I'm listening to it on Audible, that I'm really loving, but I feel like a massive hypocrite because of it. So, obviously, this now goes on YouTube. So, any viewers of the show last week will have heard me and I've said loads of times about my, my issues with The Crown and how okay. I really hate the fact that The Crown is taking somebody's life story, retelling it and without their input, without their say-so. Yeah. And I have, and, and it's not just, it's not unique to the royal family. I really, I didn't like the Pamela and Tommy thing for that reason. I just feel like there's something really kind of, uh, it makes me super uncomfortable, the idea that people could be out there and somebody else has, has the right to just go away and kind of retell their story. So I am listening to Tina Brown's palace papers which tina brown is the former vanity fair editor um in she's she's british in the states um she was the editor for years and years and years and for those who haven't we've recommended many times in the past her vanity fair's diaries i cannot recommend enough it's it's she basically published her diaries from throughout um that period and i loved it and i particularly loved listening to it she also wrote a diana biography back in the day 
so the palace papers were written during the pandemic i think towards the end of 2020 maybe even in 21 and it is a retelling of the, the life of the modern royal family so it starts with kind of the queen mother um it sort of follows it more kind of person and person rather than kind of um consecutively it's not it's, it's more about like okay so this leads us on nicely to talk about camilla this leads us on to talk about charles so it's kind of a focus on an individual at a time in two parts the first part is the older generation so it's the queen the queen mother charles and camilla predominantly a bit of prince philip as well and also diana sits within that mm. and now part two is william harry mm. wives so i'm really enjoying it and then i had this moment of oh my god that this is exactly what i preach against you know, this is this is somebody else telling the lives of somebody else I suppose so I was thinking okay what's the rationale why do I have less of a problem with this than I do with the crown I think a there's a difference between somebody fictionalizing something mm-hmm. and kind of portraying it like a drama and acting it out versus somebody kind of and something visual like something visual well. I think definitely mm-hmm. but also somebody say you know going away and saying this is it you know when it's coming from an author is so obviously the author's gone away and done their research this yeah. is what they're putting in front of you and you can make of that what you will mm-hmm. whereas I feel like it's kind of presented as gospel especially without a disclaimer when it's something like the crown or Netflix right. do you know what I mean yeah. like I feel like that's the mm-hmm. nuance I difference. do think it is different and, and I and also Tina Brown is somebody who are like completely you know she is a serious journalist like one of the mm-hmm. OG you know top 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 journalists like she will have done her research and then you take it with a pinch of salt mm-hmm. whereas yeah. Netflix is just you know Netflix it's Netflix yeah. 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 yeah so I think that's my so I'm more you know look I'm confessing to it I'm more than prepared for the haters to come and say <laughs> you're a hypocrite but I just want to be no, honest about that's what I'm him. listening to because I'm really enjoying it. It's really yeah. Good. yeah. Is it is it juicy? Like, what is it? Yeah, it's really juicy. It's a real it's a sad. It's no, it hasn't been sad. It's been juicy, but not in a salacious way. I've just started part two, and you know, she talks a lot about Paul Burrell, and you kind of just mm-hmm. she's obviously spoken to like oh. everybody who's kind of ever been really closely connected, mm-hmm. and Giles Brandreth, mm-hmm. and you know, re- genuine pe- the people who were commentating yeah. around mm-hmm. the Queen's death are obviously her contributors and she was also involved to an extent you know because of her position her title she kind of there were paths that were crossed she talks about a 9-11 memorial service that she attended Mm. in New York um as it was kind of Brits in New York paying their respects and she was sat next to Simon Sharma blah 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 you know she she has kind of the credibility to back it up and Mm. you know will have done her research so um I really recommend it if you're interested in the royals but actually more I just love her I'd recommend the Vanity Fair Diaries more, but if you finish that and you're like, God, I miss like Tina, because yeah, mm. she's just so, I don't know, there's something so kind of comforting about her and and kind of grown up and mm. she tells the story really, really well. So nice. I do really recommend it. And do you love an audible book? I love an audio Actually, book no, love- if it's a not fiction. No, yeah. Fiction yeah. somehow I can't I can't stay tuned in if it's fiction, mm. but I love people reading something they've written in their own voice. Mm. It's almost like mm. a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like a yeah. really long first person yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah. I'm also halfway through Edward Enenfall's A Visible Man on Audible. Oh, Jane. is that good? It's really good. It's really good. My God. I mean, if anyone ever thinks they can't do something, they mm. just need to listen to his book because he came from, you know, a village in Ghana. Yeah, I read to go that there was like an what he is now. Uh-huh. It's what's the word excerpt? Yeah. In the Sunday Times start yeah. of the day and I saw oh yeah and I yeah I had no idea it's remarkable just bad of me he'd never seen a white person before he moved to the UK aged like 15 or 16 like there mm. is you know people often think that it's an industry full of nepotism which to an extent you know it is and it is for so many but like he has grafted and worked his way to the top yeah. without wow. any cool. help whatsoever did you see him on Graham Norton I thought it was brilliant did you me too so <laughs> brilliant did you? I haven't seen it yet no yeah, he's he's not what I thought. He's, like, he's really, actually really cheeky and really funny. Yeah, and, like, he's really camp and fun. Yeah, and he looks fifty. No, is he? Wow. no. Yeah, I know he looks so good in it, doesn't he? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I know, Love I know. But yeah, he's really fun. It. Yeah, he looks great. Yeah. Really worth a watch, actually. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, she answer some questions. Yeah, let me whip out my question let's. cards, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, we've got a few. Let's dive in with some fashion questions. Somebody has said wedding reception in a London pub. But you, Sherry, mm. <laughs> dress code is whatever you're comfortable in. Help. Oh my God, that is so tricky, isn't Guys, it? If you're planning a wedding, come up with a kind of constructive dress code. Whatever you're yeah. comfortable in is so broad. It is very broad. And also like, I think there's a balance between, so sometimes I get questions that are like, I'm going to a wedding and the theme is space alien cowboys. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that is not okay. Tell the bride. Give people like a rough, yeah, yeah, literally. It sounds like it, doesn't it? But I think, yeah, you've got to give people some... If it's, yeah, like, 
in a in a pub which is not a stereotypical wedding reception venue mm. i think it's good to give people some direction however this person has not had any much direction mm. so i would say i think i would still wear a dress mm. like just maybe go for something a little more cash vibes like a slip dress. like a slip dress mm. with a blazer and a little kitten heel or something yeah I think that would probably be my go-to. I don't know about you. Well, I was thinking, I'd, I was thinking the opposite. I think that really works, but personally, I'd go the opposite. I'd either go for a suit or uh, a silky set. Only, and I don't, <laughs> I don't mean that in a tongue way, but only because in those options, you can't really go wrong. If other, if everybody else is quite smart, mm. then yeah. you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's quite cash, then you're also fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of works. Either way, did they say when it was? No, she does not. No, no. It's true. I had a very quick look on. Is it Keep Kitchery? Mm. And they have some of those really cool, like even if the two piece like feathery oh yeah things yeah. but even if you only wore the trousers with like 100% a top a cashmere nice. like yeah, something, yeah. Something, yeah. yeah or wear the top with some leathers or something yeah oh, that's nice yeah. I like those that yeah that yeah. Yeah, totally and lots of people out there with sleeper sets as well can whip mm. out yeah, half of a thing. sleeper set <laughs> best best sunglasses for winter what a funny question the same ones you wore in summer yeah of course the living peeps come <laughs> <Yeah>. on <laughs> reuse and recycle um are the shearling Birkenstock still in for winter are they worth the investment sherry you've got i've got the normal ones yeah not shearling however i'm into that yeah me too yeah, yeah. So, okay, jacos, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> that's my as far as my french it's not actually a french word that's made that's so not french i know one word actually <laughs> one. Why are you really going really <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah really cozy <laughs> with a, uh, a nice little gray sock yeah. yeah you mean your existing ones or you mean just generally or a shearling one well both both. Yeah, I love my existing ones, yeah. but I would love the shearling ones. But as you well. could wear your existing ones with a cozy sock. Exactly, mm, that's very true. So, do you actually need the shearling ones? That might be a bit mm. too hot. And also, the shearling ones are open toe. Oh, I see. Wait, I see yes. Are you talking about your, your clogs? Yeah, oh, I yeah. Like the Boston ones. About a shearling um, clog. I thought they. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. The plot mm. thickens. The plot thickens. Oh, shearling terrible. Birkenstock clog. No brainer. Mm-hmm. Shearling Birkenstock sandal. Mm. Wear with socks mm. while it's dry. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I feel just, like there's yeah. a shelf life on those. Yeah, well. actually, I've just remembered. I have a pair. I've got a pair. But not they're not Birkenstock, but they are from me and M of all places. Who knew they did shoes? Even? Oh, oh, you're um. Have you seen my clogs? Yes, I so have. they they are leather. They're more like a polished leather than. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're like almost like a shiny leather, mm. and they are. And then they've got a sling back as well, and then they're shielding on the inside. Love to know what Georgie thinks about them. I feel like I was gonna say she hates them, but then she also is partial to a clog. Actually, is she? well, she's got those Russell Brom- <laughs> Bromley honest. furry ones. Oh yeah, that is true. Mm. She's full of surprises. She, even if she hates them, she'll buy, she'll buy them in six months. <laughs> full <laughs> of surprises. Keep you on your toes, <laughs> guys. I can't rave about them enough. They're so comfortable. Really? Mm. Yeah. What's the, I feel what's quite the, like what's the like sole and heel like? Uh, leather, but like buttery soft, like molds to your mm. foot. Can walk for miles. Nice. In them. Oh. However, I feel quite like what's the word? Kind of. I feel dumpy in them. Do you know what I mean? I feel like weighty because like I, I think that's because I've got shoe. short legs because they're really unfeminine. Yeah. But yeah, they're like man repelling, but they're cool. Yeah, but they're so comfortable. Someone has said best mid priced long wool coats. Have you guys invested in a coat? Will you be buying new coats or will you be cracking out last year's tour? Cracking out last year's. I bought a really nice one, really nice one from Mango last year nice. mm. that I was really quite happy with. What's and it like? It's navy, it's just got a massive collar and a really it's got like two little like poppers and then a, a really big belt lovely it's quite classic yep. but I love it and it's the wool is really nice Mango have got some very good coats yeah they mm. do they do yeah. I bang on, about, bang on about this coat quite a lot the weekday Kia coat oh, yes. which is the one R.I.P you it, lost that last year's Christmas party got swiped in a bar um, no way yeah no. I don't know why like, what a dick yeah. like before Christmas I know I that's very like karma French. comes yeah. back to fight there yeah mm. and I was like that's such a weird thing to steal just like a, a coat like a black coat but then maybe they thought something would be in the pockets luckily there wasn't anyway I digress it's a really nice long like if you're taller or you're just you just want like a really long black coat it's belted really nice fit quite a little bit oversized so you don't need to size up in it I, I miss that coat actually, and mm. I may even buy it again. Do they they still sell it? They do. Oh, they do yeah, they do it in like grey. But then I replaced it with a different black coat because last year at the time it was sold out. But I think they just keep like restocking it every oh. year. Um, so I don't know that I need it now, mm. but yeah, I want it. I want everyone to feel the joy of that coat. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never think of weekday. Like I would never no, ever I, think I to even look on the really website. I don't really shop there much, no. but that mm. coat, I just yeah, yeah it was a good, a good coat. coat. A good yeah. one. Yeah. Cherry yeah. yeah. oh, winter coats. 
Well, my dilemma... You're not really a coat kind of gal. I'm not a coat no. kind of gal. So I'll be wearing a blazer, leather jacket. Are you not a coke girl? Like, you just don't... You just don't what... feel the cold? No. What I've learned is that I do feel the cold, but I like to be cold. Yes. I like to be on the side of hey. chilly rather than cosy. Yeah, not chacose. Chacose. <laughs> the opposite <laughs> of chacose. Chinookos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do like uh, a good puffer jacket. That's a happy medium. But okay. yeah, I don't like... I don't know. I just find it very constricting. Mm. Yeah. You like to be a little bit chilly. That's so interesting. I do. I've never met anyone like that in my life. Mm. Me I think it's quite like my like my dad wants to be cold. You know how like men and women fight over the heating. I feel like it's a masculine trait, yeah. or maybe they just want hotter. Yeah, you were just quite hardcore. Yeah. I don't know. I like to be cozy at home, but out and about, I like to feel the feel feel <laughs> the breeze. And also, it's not cold enough to wear. No, right now, that is true. So. That is true. That is true. But what about when it's like zero? But, but it will be. Yeah, mm. zero degrees. I will put one on. Puffer. My mum will force me to put one on. <laughs> this is true. You're living at home now. There's no way you're leaving, yeah, leaving the drawer without a coat yeah. on. Um, where's your puffer of choice from? Uh, it's actually from Primark. And such <gasps> Sherry, one. I've got a Primark oh. puffer from last oh, year. It do? is the best coat I own. They are so really? good. Well, no. Oh, but no. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> not there. Oh, it was something like £28. And yeah. it's a floor. And it's my dog walking coat. Mm -hmm. Massive hood pretty much floor to, like, to my ankles. And I, like I said, I would never replace it with a better one. I see no reason yeah. why it wouldn't just be my, my like whole yeah. weather coat forever. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, wow. so good. Twenty-eight pounds. I've had mine for like three years. Wow. Yeah. I get so many compliments. Oh, I get so many compliments. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you, I bought it with a pair of um, kind of like outdoorsy hiking style boots. Like kind of like, they're like you know oh, yeah, someone between like cool. a welly and a hiking boot with yeah. those kind of like striped laces mm -hmm. and. As an outfit, it's sick. And it was like under 50 pounds. <laughs> well, I say so that. myself. <laughs> if I say so myself, I look awesome in it. I look fucking sick in that. Someone has asked, what is on your travel hit list for the year, Sherry? Where's, where are you hoping to travel to in 2023? 2023. Sorry, 2023. Yes. Yeah, that's mad. Wild. Oh, goodness. I know. Um... Heavens. Well, he heavens, heavens, heavens above. <laughs> um, I don't know where that's come from. Is that new today? Yeah, new right, today. Cool. I love it. <laughs> um, well, I really want to do a big trip next year, and hopefully, my family and I will go, will go to Dominica, oh, which is where my dad's other family is from. Oh, amazing. Yeah, which is very beautiful. It's similar to like St. Lucia in terms of landscape. It's very green, lush, as opposed to like Barbados beaches, because uh, it's a volcanic island. Oh, it's cool. honestly so beautiful, but it's just a pain to get there because I don't have um, an international airport. So you have to fly to like Antigua or Costa Rica oh, okay. or somewhere. And then we'll get an internal flight. Or... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Which can make it very expensive. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so that's number one on my list. Fun. Um, nice. Otherwise, I'm really dying to go to South Korea. Oh, so yes. Yes. I would there. love that. Yeah, I'd mm. love to go to South Korea. It's just Korea. happening at the minute. South mm. Korean yeah. Wave. Um exhibition at VNA, which is also very good I oh, recommend yeah. mm. um, and yeah just like in terms of culture very rich beauty 10 out of 10 food fried chicken burgers what's up to love <laughs> yeah. I'm ready yeah Perfect. fun mm. That's really, how long do you think you need that have you looked into it at all I think you need you can combine it if you want to go somewhere else nearby mm. but I think you need at least two weeks yeah, I, think so I also think if you're going to fly for that long then there's no point going for a week make, make it mm. work yeah mm. although mm. so actually I had this conversation with my parents this week because they they kind of had that, there are loads of places they wanted to take off and they were finding that they couldn't find these two week slots to go and do things in. So they have decided to, so they're going, they, they, like Egypt's been on the bucket list forever, but they haven't been able to find like two or three weeks to do Egypt. So they're doing five days in and out. And they're like, obviously it's really frustrating if you're spending loads of money on flights to go and do somewhere and not in like quite a short space of time. Mm -hmm. However, you're spending the money on the flights either way. And at least this way you then tick it off rather than waiting for when you've next got two weeks to go or three weeks to go. Mm -hmm. And so there kind of is an argument for like, as long as you can handle the jet lag, just hopping yeah. on a plane and go, you know, if, if it's That's South Korea, true, yeah. you know, if, if it's finding three weeks to do that trip or if it's, you know, you could do it in one if you just bash mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Very true. Yeah. See the highlights. Yeah. 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 Tour, where's on the list mm -hmm. for next year? Gosh, I feel like Sherry's sure, kind of like blown it out of the water yeah, yeah. there. I don't think yeah. this I mean, it's happen. her job. This is like, But, yes. also, but yes. also, you know, yeah, she's she's in there. She, what, what have you got? <laughs> I'm sure we could talk about what you've got planned for wellness -y next year. We can do that next week. Right. <laughs> uh, you know what? We had some friends staying on the weekend from Boston and they were like, you have to come and see us. And actually, I was like, fuck it, we should go next yeah. year. So I really want to do like an East Coast trip. Fun. Because we used to live, when I, I used to live there when I was a kid. So yes. we could like kind of incorporate that a little Have bit. you been back? When I was like 30. A long time Maybe ago. even like younger, actually. Where did you live? Um, in Greenwich in Connecticut. So lovely. For like six years. Yeah. Um, so oh, wow. yeah, we, and I'd love to, like, now it's autumn here. I just love Fall. Yeah. Fall. And like yeah. <laughs> I would love to like, go to Vermont and like do yes. that. Yeah. Apple picking and all that. Stuff. Yeah. That's a trip. Um, That's a vibe. Yeah. You can do it by train, actually. 
I've done Boston, Washington, New York oh, as a train. Yeah, one. Nice. I can't remember which leg is like a six-hour train, so it's quite long. But you can Ooh. rather than flying, it's quite. Yeah, long. that could be fun. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, I love that. I remember buying Liz of Gossip Girl DVDs and doing it. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, and I'd love to do it on the ski trip at some point. Yeah, um, but I need to plan that because it gets everything gets really booked up. Yes, mm. true. Mm. Yes, but yeah, time's ticking. Polly, oh, yeah. on the list. Yeah, I think we'll also try and go skiing again next year. Um, we've got a couple of weddings abroad as well, so I guess that takes up quite a lot of holiday time but my ultimate kind of place that I would like to go on a big big holiday is like Canada and do the national park so just that's been on my list for such a long time and it's I guess finding the right time Mm. because I guess you probably need a good like couple of weeks Mm. to do that when you've got yeah to be fair that's probably not one you can do in a no so it probably won't be next year but that is my you know at some point before we have to settle down a little too much that would be the one how about you I really want to go to Mexico City next year it's a real real foodie hub and that is my that's top Mm. of the list Um, and so that needs to be that needs to be factored in and I would really like to do also some national parks but in America I really would like to do Wyoming and Jackson Jackson and Wyoming and um, and Zion National Park and do something but we're quite actually it turns out we're quite like adventurous is far too strong a word but (laughs) Like, we're not really chillers on holiday. And yeah, even in New York, I'm quite bored of that. And yeah. we want to do some stuff. And same as you, times are ticking. So mm, you've yeah. got to do these fun things mm, whilst you can. Yeah. So, yeah, trying to trying to backbench anything that can be done with children mm. in these few years and try and do prioritise yeah. mm-hmm. slightly more adventurous things. Yeah, mm-hmm. agree. That's the plan. All right, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and thank you for listening. If you have any feedback at all, please do email podcast at showbacks.com. We love hearing from you. Don't forget to also keep your eyes peeled for the question box. And please do also rate, review, subscribe, and tell your friends if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.